without any further ado, let's start the show. Um, Larry Vukovic and Kai Lyons uh, will be playing some wonderful piano and guitar uh, duos, including some music of Bill Evans and Jim Hall. And um, today, of course, is Bill Evans' birthday. So this is a great way to ce celebrate Bill's birthday. And as far as that goes, yesterday was Oscar Peterson's birthday. Uh, two great um, two great jazz pianists in one weekend. So I'm sure they'll be playing some, uh, some music to honor Oscar Peterson, too. So uh, please give a warm virtual welcome to Larry Vukovic and Kai Lyons. Enjoy. Good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are. Thank you very much for joining us. When this performance was originally booked a while back, we had no idea what today's date is. Well, we found out that today, August 16th, is the birthday of the great pianist, Bill Evans, another wonderful jazz bebop pianist born today was Mal Waldron. And I'll tell you more about him in a minute. Yesterday, August 15th, was another outstanding pianist's birthday, Oscar Peterson. So our program is based on some of the compositions dealing with these three gentlemen and some other things. But I think uh, you will enjoy our varied program the reason I picked the first tune tenderly that Oscar Peterson recorded is because he exposes the piano sound from the bottom end, middle range to the top end, give it more of an orchestral feeling, and the tune is tenderly.
Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, exceptional young man, I've been in San Francisco since 51 from former Yugoslavia, Montenegro. I've heard a lot of great cats. This guy is one of the best I ever heard, not only here, anywhere. Senor Kai Lyons, the reason I say senor is not Latin, but he speaks fluent Spanish. It's scary. He goes to Cuba. He goes to Ghana, he goes to Brazil. He's a young man who studies the music of the world, and he studied on the East Coast with Malgaru Miller, Harold Mayburn, and he got scholarships. He's just so good to have him here. And next election is from Brazil. I recorded it on Concord Records with Tom Harrell, Pete Escovedo, Larry Grenadier and the originator from Brazil of the Tamba Trio, Elcio Milito, great drummer, and composer is Roberto Menescal, a gentleman from Caracas who was studying in Munich. Chuchito Sanoja introduced me. If you're listening to ch this program, Chuchito, muchas gracias. This is Ah, se eu pudesse, ah, if I could.
this tune has beautiful harmonic movement color. This is part of Brazil. Throughout the program, we'll give you an example how Brazil contributed to the world. Brazil was influenced by American jazz, and I'll tell you more about it later. And uh, Kai will play a solo by one of the famous Brazilian composers in a minute. Great, uh, beautiful stuff that they did. Next tune, Bill Evans and Jim Hall did a duet album together. First one was Undercurrent, and they did My Funny Valentine, two takes. Both are very creative. I like the reason why we do the second tape, because in the second take, Bill Evans, without a bass, walks a phenomenal bass line. What I mean is the feeling is like a bass. It has the rises and falls of the bass line. And why Bill Evans said that ability, most people had no idea. He was a boogie-woogie champ in Jersey as a teenager. He told Marion McPartla, I was the fastest boogie-woogie player. Who could think of Bill Evans, but that's what he did. And later he, he had his own style. So here is my funny valentine. Thank you. 
Sky Lions, my funny Valentine. Next election, I don't remember who wrote the tune, beautiful tune, also recorded with uh, Bill Evans and Jim Hall, I Hear a Rhapsody. The film, uh, the movie was used kind of a film noir, more of a, of a drama, love triangle. Paul Douglas, Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Ryan, a young Marilyn Monroe, I Hear a Rhapsody. And all the great players I mentioned on some of my broadcasts, Lester Young, Ben Webster would not play a tune unless they knew the lyrics because knowing the lyrics made their lyrical expression of music stronger. Check the beginning. And when I hear you call and whisper to me, I don't hear a call at all. I hear a rhapsody. Do you hear those tunes today with those lyrics? No way. Anyways, they may be available, but what is pushed on the media is rock and roll. They're not going to tell you about that. And also, Bill Evans was a master of using substitute chords. They are great to use as long you keep the feeling of the tune. If you're too hip and use any substitute, takes you in space, then you lose the tune. But what he used is in this tune are beautiful substitutions.
I'll comment in Spanish. Muy bonito. Ah, si, senor. Muy bonito. Well, interesting thing about Bill Evans. To me, the best Bill Evans I mentioned, he was a boogie boogie champ, high energy. His first albums, because he was healthy, when he, unfortunately, like other musicians and different people, became a subject of substance abuse, the energy went down. He always set a good standard of playing, but that burning energy, creativity was early. Perhaps my favorite album, Everybody Digs Bill Evans, endorsements from George Shearing, from Miles, from Cannonball, Ahmad Jamal, great album, and it shows Bill Evans in high energy, playing bebop in his own way, shifting rhythms, totally spontaneous. This is Gigi, Cri Gigi Grice composition, Minority, and Gigi Grice was a great alto player in the 50s.
Thank you, minority. Next composition was written by Bill Evans. He's a famous tune that he recorded on his trio album with Scott LaFaro. First time Scott joined him on Portrait in Jazz. Blue and green, and what happens when you see kind of blue album, Miles Davis put his name on it. Miles was a great musician and band leader, but unfortunately had a bad habit of taking other people's tunes. Clean head Vinson, I had a great pleasure to work with him. Alto, great bebop alto, blues singer, player. Clean, clean head wrote four. He wrote tune up. Miles put his name on it. After Clean Head died, you can see it on Miles' website. Oh, he apologizes. But he got all the bread. Anyway, I had the pleasure of seeing Bill Evans several times in Europe, in London, in Italy, and last time was at the Great American Music Hall. He was a gentleman, quiet, outspoken. We had a nice talk, and he, he just very quietly said, you know, I wrote basically most all the stuff on Kind of Blue. It was his concept of harmony, new modal way of performing, and everybody played great. And Miles, of course, had a great concept. He knew what was important. Here is Blue and Green. Thank you. Bill Evans uh, did a lot of studying. I like to say hello to a really good friend. He used to play drums. He grew up in Geneva, New York, and his close friend was Scott LaFaro. His father, his name is Chuck Ralston, and uh, Chuck played drums. His father had a band. Scott LaFaro played in a band. But they were also close to uh, to Bill Evans and Chuck. I didn't know where Bill Evans was buried. He died 
I believe 1980, I saw him at Keystone before he passed away. He did play in an inspired way, like he might have known he was going. And uh, Chuck sent me photos of Bill Evans' gravesite. He's from Plainfield, New Jersey, New Jersey, but he is buried in Baton Rouge. I guess that's Louisiana. He went to school there. At this time, another gentleman I met in Munich in 69, I was the house pianist at the Domicile Jazz Club. Mal Waldron was Billy Halliday's last accompanist. He recorded with John Coltrane, so many great people. And he did a first album, ECM Records is known for kind of European classically oriented jazz, but Mal's first album is called Free At Last, and it's a swinging album with Isla Eckinger and Clarence Beckton. I think his most famous tune is Soul Eyes that uh, John Coltrane and Stan Getz both recorded.
Kai Lions, uh, that has to be one of the most beautiful ballads coming out of the bebop and post-bop era. Mal Waldron, Soul Eyes. Uh, my life has been really like a movie. I'm so fortunate. One thing kept opening up after another. I come to Bay Area. I was a teenager in 1951. Pretty soon I meet Vince Guaraldi who is known for peanuts, but Vince studied classical. He had a wonderful piano touch. He could play great salsa, Montuno swing. He also played wonderful Brazilian feel on his album, the Black Orpheus impressions from the Brazil when the music came. He also recorded Cash to Fate to the Wind and that became a signature tune, and he was very, very versatile. And then he joined up with Bola Sete, great Brazilian guitarist, and I don't remember his Brazilian name. Bola Sete in Portuguese means seven ball, because in America, in billiard, the black ball is eight. In Brasilia, it's seven. Bola Sete. And Vince Guaraldi wrote a piece from his impressions in Japan using some pentatonic movement. This is Ginza Samba, he recorded with Bola Sete. Thank you. 
Vince Guaraldi. Uh, this time, ladies and gentlemen, we were speaking about Brazil. Here is one of the most influential composers pre-Bassa Nova. There were two of them. One was Radames Gnatali played great piano influenced by Ravel and Debussy and jazz, wrote some wonderful things. And the other one was great guitarist Garotto. It was uh, Carmen Miranda who first brought authentic Brazilian rhythms to the States, late 30s or 1940 or d during that time. And the guitarist was none other than Garotto. And what was interesting, Garotto, as you will hear, had some fresh harmonies, movements ahead of its time, beautiful stuff. And who were people that followed him regularly in New York? None other than Duke Ellington and Art Tatum. They were sitting in the audience and said, boy, this is something fresh. And here is Sky Lyons playing one of the beautiful Garotto pieces. Bravo, Kai Lyons. Uh, I forgot the name of uh, these works. Were they etudes? etudes? What were they by Garotto? I forgot the name of these pieces. You know, he had a name for them. He, has, he had 24 of them on one album, and the gentleman who kept his legacy alive was wonderful. He's still around, Paolo Bellinati. He used to come to San Francisco, and if you look at this album, Paolo Bellinati plays Garotto. You should try to get it. Each piece is different, beautiful moving harmonies, 
just another world, you know, those were the days. Oh boy. Well, what is interesting, now here is something uh, by Bud Powell, and Bud Powell was trained to be a concert pianist, and he had phenomenal technique. So what happened, Charlie Parker comes around, and Bird gives, I mean, Bud Powell leaves his original intention, and his teacher was so disappointed, and follows Charlie Parker, and it goes that way. So he was known as uh, Charlie Parker on the piano, and as it happens, in two weeks, excuse me, I have to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. August 29th is Charlie Parker's birthday. 27th is Lester Young's birthday. So this is a Bud Powell original dance of the infidels. I heard Bud in Paris at the Blue Note. I walk in and this is the piece he was playing. And uh, another sneeze. <coughs> you can't predict these things. Yeah, thank you. So this is dance of the infidels.
here is something from Cuba. One of their famous composers of this, of this selection and also Tres Palabras is Osvaldo Fares. Before him, it was the gentleman who wrote Simonet and uh, Malagueña, Ernesto Lecuona. Amazing country, Cuba, small place. Kai goes there, I wish I'd like to go there too. Some of the best doctors in South America came from Cuba, I understand. They're so talented. The music is phenomenal. And uh, this piece became very popular in America. Perhaps, perhaps, quizás, it was usually played faster. We'll state it slow first, so you can see the beauty of the tune.
Muchas gracias, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you probably know, due to the pandemic, the only ball game in town is streaming. And we are fortunate to do that. And whoever can donate something great, we appreciate it. I know it's a difficult time. If not, at least your spirit, we can feel it, enjoy the music. And uh, let me see. I was fortunate when I met Vitz Guraldi to become his only student. He was so busy, he turned everybody away. And he was very knowledgeable about jazz. I'll give you one example. He just showed me at one lesson George Gershwin's tune, I Got Rhythm, so many tunes Charlie Parker wrote on it. Okay, those are basic changes. However, the bebop guys put substitute changes. They went on the first part to sharp five, F, excuse me, B flap to F to F sharp. And they played these on the first part of the tune, which modulated to the tonic. What happens? Amazing. Vince shows me this. There was a club on Columbus and Green jazz seller. They would had they had a house band, Bill Wejohns was a house pianist, and the, the other owner was Sonny Wayne, the drummer. The bass player was Max Hartstein from Indianapolis, many great musicians from there. And they would feature every month either Leo Wright, Pony Pine, Poindexter, Brumore, but they would let me sit in. So I come to sit in in the house Scott LaFaro is sitting there, Charlie Hayden, and on the bandstand, Eric Dolphy jumps up. So he said, I got rhythm. He starts playing these changes. Now, because Vince showed them to me, I heard it, and I followed him. If Vince didn't show me, I would have wondered what the hell was he playing. But that's how jazz is. You know, we all help each other, and uh, Vince showed me those changes. Anyway, a, uh, we have a band, Vince Guaraldi Tribute Ensemble, played at Monterey San Francisco Festival, where we do some peanuts. But what is interesting, when Vince hired me to become his piano partner, for months we played. Tom Harrell was in the band. He did not play one peanuts tune. He just wanted to blow. Anyway, I dedicated to him a funky tune. He loved the blues. This is called Vince's Boogaloo Blues. <laughs>
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How about a great hand? Kai Lyons on the guitar. Kai Lyons. Bonsoir, La Canoche. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you very much for joining us because I know we have some people in Europe. Uh, in Sweden, we have good friends listening too in Norway. Taxa Mikke. Thank you very much. See you next time. Wonderful music. Larry Bukovic, Kai Lyons. Thanks so much. So uh, the links are still up, and we still hope you'll donate if you haven't already uh, to these great musicians. 100% um, of any donation you make uh, goes directly to the players. And um, you can see the links uh, here on your screen. Um, please give generously, uh, and we really appreciate it. Thanks so much. So that's all for today for the showroom sessions. Uh, but we will be back here this coming Wednesday with a special show with Omar Sosa, the wonderful internationally acclaimed Cuban pianist. Um, he'll be here with his special guest. That's 5 o'clock on Wednesday and 5 o'clock on Thursday. Hope we'll see you back for a special solo show with Martin Luther McCoy. So uh, until then, this is Jim Callahan from Piedmont Piano Company on special assignment. Uh, and for the showroom sessions, saying thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.